हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होपफुली ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन सो फाइनली द डे कम्स फॉर द जे एडवांस टू जीरो टू टू एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सोल्यूशंस ऑफ पेपर वन फॉर मैथमेटिक्स माई डियर ओके जे एडवांस टू जीरो टू टू सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द प्रॉब्लम माई डियर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन मीन्स सेक्शन वन विच इज इंटीरियर टाइप प्रॉब्लम माई डियर एंड यू हैव टू गिव द आंसर इन इंटीजर्स आइदर इट इज ट्रंकेटेड टू डेसीमल पॉइंट माई डियर ओके सो इज गिविंग द क्वेश्चन considering only the principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions find the value of this thing see you have to find the value of this inverse trigonometric functions my dear okay since we know that itf are only angles therefore it is for very sure the answer to be coming at last would be an angle my dear so what i am doing here i am picking the very elementary element of this question what is that this is tan inverse root 2 upon pi my dear okay so what i am doing i am assuming Theta as tan inverse of root two upon pi. So from here I will say that my tan theta will be equals root two upon pi, and it is surely for my dear yes perpendicular upon base. So now if I convert it in another trigonometry like in sine and cos, because the question is of mixed my dear. Okay, there is cos, sine, and tan present in the question. So what I am doing, I am converting this thing into some another trigonometry. So sine theta will be what, my dear? Yes, it will be root two upon yes square root of two plus pi square. Okay. Now what will be this theta? Theta in terms of sine inverse will be sine inverse root two divided by root two plus pi square, my dear. This is let us say equation number one, my dear. Now look at this part root two upon root of two plus pi square. Where it is present? See, this is very important, my dear, in this question. Okay, so it is present here, my dear, with cos inverse, but it should be present with sine inverse type. So I will use the identity that cos inverse x plus sine inverse x is equals to pi by two. Okay, so here I am now starting with the first step now of the solution. So three by two, and then I am writing cos inverse of x type thing as pi by two minus of Sine inverse of x type thing means it is like that, my dear. Yes, root two upon two plus pi square. Okay, and now I am not changing this expression at all. This is one by four sine inverse of two root two pi divided by two plus pi square, my dear. Okay, hopefully you are uh, getting my point very clearly in your mind. Okay. And also, I am uh, writing this tan inverse of root two by pi in terms of uh, sine inverse because this is theta I have assumed, my dear. So it will be sine inverse of root two upon root of two plus pi square. This is the value we are getting, my dear. Hopefully, you are getting my point. Okay. Now, what to do? Yes, just multiply three by two inside. So I am getting yes three pi by four. And listen, my dear. This is a uh, minus of three pi by two that I am getting, my dear. Okay. 3 by 2 sin inverse of root 2 upon 2 plus pi square my dear and this is yes plus of sin inverse root 2 upon root 2 plus pi square so what i am getting now okay i am writing it here for you this is 1 by 4 sin inverse of 2 root 2 pi upon 2 plus pi square this is the thing my dear and this thing with this thing will give me yes total minus of half Sine inverse of root two upon square root of two plus pi square, my dear. Now we will be uh, solving this concept, my dear. Okay. So what I am doing here? Yes, three pi by four plus uh, one by four. I am taking common from here, my dear, for you. Okay. So what I will be getting inside? I will be getting yes, sine inverse of two root two pi upon two plus pi square, and here I will be getting minus of two sine inverse. Root two upon root of two plus pi square, my dear. Okay, hopefully you are getting my point. Okay, now listen, my dear, very carefully. Since this value is less than one, therefore I am using this identity, my dear, of two sine inverse x, which is equals to we all know yes sine inverse of two x square root of one minus x square, my dear. So now instead of x, I am putting this. Okay, root two upon root two plus pi square so when i put this value my dear here so instead of x i am putting the value as yes root 2 upon root of 2 plus pi square okay it will be uh, definitely equals to sin inverse of 
टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई रूट टू अपॉन रूट ऑफ टू प्लस पाई स्क्वायर एंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई इन दी स्क्वायर रूट आई एम गेटिंग वन माइनस टू अपॉन टू प्लस पाई स्क्वायर माई डियर सो फाइनली इफ यू कैलकुलेट दिस वैल्यू आफ्टर टेकिंग दी एल सी एम माई डियर ओके देन यू विल बी गेटिंग दिस थिंग साइन वर्स ऑफ टू रूट टू पाई अपॉन टू प्लस पाई स्क्वायर ओके सो दिस वैल्यू टू साइन वर्स रूट टू अपॉन रूट ऑफ टू प्लस पाई स्क्वायर is equals to this value my dear exactly check it there 2 root 2 pi upon 2 plus pi square and plus minus would be cancelled out now so what would be the answer now the answer we are getting is 3 pi by 4 my dear now let us take the question number 2 my dear let alpha be a positive real number my dear and f is a function defined from real to real and g is another function which is being defined from alpha comma infinite to real numbers my dear okay and what he is giving to us fx is sin of pi x by 12 and gx is 2 log base e root x minus root alpha upon log base e e power root x minus e power root of alpha and we have to find this limiting value limit x tending towards alpha positive f of gx see where it will move first when i put x tending towards alpha plus then it will move first inside the function g my dear So first of all, I am calculating the limit x tending towards alpha positive for the function g x, and then I will come back to f, my dear. Okay. So what I am doing here, okay, uh, I am taking limit x tending towards alpha positive on this function, my dear. So two, this is ln of root x minus root of alpha, and in the division, what I am doing, my dear, listen to me very carefully here. Okay, what I am doing, log base e. I am just taking this part common, my dear. So I will be getting e power root alpha and e power root x minus of root alpha minus one. And in division, I do not have anything, my now. Okay. Now listen to me uh, very carefully. Since we know this thing, my dear, limit x tending towards a, e power yes, f x minus one upon f x will be tending towards one if this f of a will be tending towards zero, my dear. Okay, so I will be using this point because I am getting yes. If I put x tending towards alpha here, I will be getting e power zero. So one minus one will be becoming zero. So this is behaving like my dear yes f x type. So what I am doing here, I am just multiplying and dividing by same expression root x minus of root alpha my dear. Hopefully it should be very clear to all of you. Okay, now by standard limit, it would be definitely one my dear. Okay, so after putting it to one, what I am getting here, see, limit x tending towards alpha plus two multiplied by ln of root x minus of root alpha, and now inside what is left, my dear? See, I am using the logarithm property as well. Okay, e power root alpha is just like m. Assume it. This thing you can assume as n, my dear. So I am applying the property of log. Log m n is log m plus log n here. So what I am writing here for you. The first term would be log base e e power root alpha, and the next term will be yes ln of root x minus of root alpha, my dear. Now what I am doing here, I am just dividing this quantity in the denominator. I am just dividing this quantity in the denominator. So what I am getting, my dear, yes please, limit x running towards alpha plus. 2 divided by yes it will eventually become root alpha by logarithmic property and 2 divided by i am writing this value ln of root x minus of root alpha my dear okay and plus 1 we are getting my dear hopefully you are getting my point very clearly now if i put this thing here what i will be getting this value will be tending towards ln of 0 plus and we all know that whenever x is moving towards 0 from right hand side the value of ln goes towards minus of infinity and this is a finite value root of alpha my dear okay so what i can say now finite value upon infinity will definitely will become zero so the final limiting value will be as yes, 2 upon 0 plus 1 which will be equals to 2 so means if i am applying the limit x tending towards alpha plus over gx i am getting 2 my dear and now this 2 will definitely come in the domain of f so now if x is tending towards 2 in the domain of f now here my dear i am picking the point at the last okay So limit x tending towards two. What is f x, my dear? This is sine pi x uh, by twelve. So now if I put the value two here, I will be getting the answer as sine of pi by six, which will be equal to half. So answer is point five, my dear. Hopefully you get this question very clearly, very easy, my dear. Okay, I will read this question as you can say easy problem. Okay.
Now question number three, my dear. In a study about a pandemic, data of 900 persons was collected. Okay. It was found that 900 persons had symptom of fever, my dear. So we are uh, writing the data while reading the question, my dear. Okay. So number of persons having the fever, NF, equals 190 given to us in the question. Now read next. Number of persons had symptom of cough means N of C. I am repeating cough by C. It is my dear 220. Number of persons having breathing problem. So I am uh, writing it as B, breathing. Okay. So this is 220 again given to us my dear. Now next thing what is given? 330 persons has symptom of fever or cough or both. Means F union C is given my dear. Either or is using. So what he has given to us? Yes. N of fever union cuff. This data is equals to my dear 330 in the question. Okay. Till here we have read. Now 350 persons are there having cuff or breathing or both. Okay. So means C union B. N of C union B is equals to uh, 350 given my dear. Okay. And next what is given to us? Fever and breathing problem, okay, means F union B, fever or breathing or both, so it is equals to 340 in the question given, okay. 30 persons had all the three symptoms, means number of persons which are common with all the three, means fever, intersection, cough, intersection, yes, breathing are 30 given in the question. Now if a person is selected randomly my dear from the 900 persons means I am selecting a single person from 900 persons then what is the probability that the person has at most one symptom my dear person has at most one of the symptom. So what he is asking first of all we will deal with the favorable case what is favorable case my dear if a person has at most one symptom means suppose if he has fever then he would not have the cuff and breathing problem my dear okay so what he is asking my dear n of f intersection c bar intersection b bar means the persons only suffering with the fever plus now since at most one symptom means it can be a possibility that person uh, can be suffering from cuff but not from fever and breathing my dear this thing is asking now next thing will be yes what person uh, the person is suffering with breathing problem my dear f bar intersection c bar intersection b and next term is yes has at most one symptom means now it there can be a person who is not suffering with any of the symptom my dear okay so i am adding this okay n of f bar intersection c bar intersection b bar so this, these number of persons will give me the favorable cases, my dear. Hopefully you are getting my point. Now we have to calculate these things, okay, individually by using the data given to us, my dear, okay. So we are using the uh, fresh page for finding the data, my dear, okay. So uh, let us take the uh, Venn diagram for it, my dear. This is for uh, fever, this is for cuff, and now we are taking the next for uh, breathing. Okay, this is for breathing, my dear. Now, what is the data given? We are going to check here. Okay, the number of persons who are suffering from fever are 190, means total are 190, my dear, you are getting. Okay, now since N of F union C is equal to, yes, what is the value given to us? It is 330, my dear. So, it is 330 given. I am applying the formula, okay, NF plus nc minus n of f intersection c we are calculating this value so nf is 190 okay and similarly what is the value of nc nc is 220 and we will be uh, subtracting 330 from it and we are getting the value for f intersection c my dear so what will be this value yes if i subtract 330 from this thing so this is total value 410 minus of 330 equals n of f intersection c which is coming to be 80 my dear for you okay now similarly we are using the uh, next thing n of yes f intersection b yes n of f union b you are using my dear okay n of f union b it is equals yes nf plus 
and b minus of n f intersection b now we will calculate this value as l as well okay therefore n of f intersection b will be what n f is 190 and n b is also my dear uh, 220 yes okay 220 so i am writing here 220 and minus uh, f union b is what f union b okay this is 340 my dear okay so i am subtracting 340 again so what i will be getting then yes it is equals to 410 minus of 340 then the value coming is 70 my dear now what is the value for uh, i am using the again formula for now these two things b union c so n b union c will be what my dear it will be n b plus n c minus of n b intersection c now i will be calculating n b intersection c for you n b is just 220 n c is also 220 and minus the union formula okay so the union of all the two is c and b is 350 my dear okay so i am subtracting 350 here so what is the value coming yes this is 440 minus 350 which is 90 my dear okay hopefully you are getting this point very clearly now we will be calculating the n of f union b union c first of all means the persons who like at least one of yes the persons who are suffering from at least one of fever and breathing or cough problem it has a formula yes nf plus nc okay 190 plus 220 plus 220 and minus of yes we have calculated these values my dear intersections so minus of 80 minus of 70 minus of 90 plus which are common to only three it is 30 my dear hopefully you are getting this point okay so now uh, what is the value now we are getting here check it fast okay this is the value yes 150 and 90 if we added it it will be my dear 240 okay and it is 220 into 3 times 220 into 3 times my dear okay value is okay 190 plus 30 is 220 so 220 into 3 times will be 660 and from 660 we are uh, subtracting the value 240 my dear so what is the remaining value we are getting yes okay 420 are the people who are either suffering from fever or breathing or cough my dear okay now we will calculate yes now we will calculate n of f bar intersection b bar intersection c bar means the people who are not suffering from any of the symptom so total how many 900 people and at least one value is 420 so we will subtract 420 from it my dear so uh, what is the value we are getting this is equals to 480 my dear okay so from the favorable case one of the value i have found out which is 480 my dear now we will find out all the values like that first of all i am finding the value for f intersection c bar intersection b bar my dear for you okay so what will be the value yes now i am writing this value this is total uh, you can say 190 total of c was 220 total of b was 220 and common of uh, f and c we have calculated which is 80 my dear okay common of f and c is 80 and then common of f and b is 70 and then the common of uh, b and c that we have calculated is 90 in the problem my dear okay now we are going to calculate the persons who are only suffering with this fever fever my dear okay so, so how to calculate this thing okay from total of f means from 190 subtract the common of f and c subtract the common of yes f and b and in this subtraction the common of all the three would be subtracted twice so i will add once again my dear i will add one of the okay value so what i am getting now n of i am calculating my dear n of f intersection c bar intersection b bar will be what my dear okay from 190 subtract 80 subtract 70 but add 30 my dear so what is the value you are getting yes 220 minus 150 it is 70 my dear okay now next thing now we will be calculating yes uh, f intersection c f bar intersection c intersection b bar my dear means the person who are only suffering from the cuff these only these ones my dear so total are how many total are 220 okay from 220 subtract the common of c and f okay 80 subtract the common of yes c and b it is 90 okay and now add all the three yes one time so this is the value so it means from 250 we have to uh, subtract 170 the value we are getting here is 80 my dear 
Now we will be calculating the value for yes, who are suffering from B means breathing problem. So F bar intersection C bar intersection B. So out of this B circle 220, subtract the common of B and F first of all, which is 70, subtract the common of B and C, uh, which is 90, and uh, which is 90, and add 30, my dear, at the end. So we will be getting the value as 250 and minus of we are getting 160. So the value we are getting here is 90, my dear. Okay. So therefore, therefore my favorable cases will be what in 480 okay means the persons who are not suffering from any of the symptom 480 plus these all values my dear that we have calculated 70 80 and 90 added my dear in it okay 70 80 and 90 so if i give 10 to 70 it will be 80 so 83 times it will be my dear 240 so just add uh, 240 in 480 what you will be getting my dear you will be getting 720 as the favorable cases so what is the probability yes favorable cases 720 upon total were 900 so if i calculate this value after just my dear cutting the portions we are getting the value as 4 by 5 which is equals 0.8 okay so this is the problem which is the combined problem of probability and set theory my dear and in my point of view this problem i will rate it as moderate not tough but calculation is there that's why it is moderate my dear so be careful with the calculation while doing the problems in j be patient in doing the problems okay taking the question number four my dear let z be a complex number with non-zero imaginary part means the imaginary part of z is non-zero if z is equals okay if this thing if 2 plus 3z plus 4z square upon 2 minus 3z plus 4z square is a real number when it is a real number, then you have to find the value of mod of z square, my dear. Okay. So very easy problem. How to solve it? Let's check, my dear. Okay. What I am doing, since this 4z square and 2 are looking same. So what I am going to do here, first of all, I am making the denominator part in the numerator as well, my dear. So what I am doing here, listen, 4z square minus 3z I like. Okay. In numerator. So minus 3z I am giving yes and plus 2 and now i have subtracted and added 3z in the numerator so the final value will become then 3z plus 3z 6z and now also i am dividing the denominator part okay so this is 4z square minus of 3z plus 2 this is again 4z square minus of 3z plus 2 so this will be cancelled out so the value coming is 1 plus now divide z here my dear i am getting 6 upon yes 4z plus 2 by z minus of 3. Now it means this thing must be a real number. If this thing must be a real number, then for sure this must be a real number, my dear. If this will be real, then real upon real will be real, my dear. Okay? So now what I am going to do here for you, yes, if this is a real number, since 4z plus 2 by z is real, is purely real, therefore if z is real, my dear, Suppose if z is real, then definitely z will be equals to z bar. So I am using this concept here as well, my dear. Therefore, yes, I will be getting 4z plus 2 by z equals 4z bar plus, my dear, yes, 2 by z bar. Now, yes, taking these terms here, so 4 common z minus z bar. Now, taking this term there, so 2 common 1 by z bar minus of 1 by z I am getting. Now take the LCM as well. I am getting yes. Uh, z minus of z bar divided by z z bar. So these will be cancelled out. And I am getting the value of z z bar as half. And what is z z bar by property? This is mod z square and which is coming to be half my dear. So the answer for this question is half which is 0.5 my dear. So this question again I will rate it as the moderate type because if you do not convert this expression into the easier expression then it will become difficult for you to solve my dear okay so let's start with the question number five my dear let z bar denotes the complex conjugate of a complex number okay and iota is equals root of minus one so in the set of complex numbers find the number of distinct roots for this equation z bar minus z square equals iota z bar plus z square my dear okay so we have to find out the number of z means in the set of complex numbers which are satisfying this equation my dear so what i am doing here for you my dear listen okay 
I am just taking yes z bar plus z square and in division I am taking this thing so z bar minus z square it is equals yes 1 upon iota which will be equals minus iota. So I will say that z square plus z bar divided by okay z square minus z bar will be equals my dear yes iota. So by looking this quantity it is coming to be iota it means this must be purely imaginary quantity my dear. So if it is purely imaginary I will apply the concept of purely imaginary my dear here okay. So it means it will be for very sure uh, z square plus z bar upon z square minus z bar would be definitely equals to minus of this thing my dear means z bar. So I am getting here my dear yes z bar square and z bar bar is z okay and in denominator I will be getting z bar square and minus of z I am getting here for you okay yes. So now uh, what we are doing in this question we are applying the componendo and dividendo. So if I apply componendo means I am adding this quantity here. So if I add this quantity I will be getting yes 2 z square and in the division I am subtracting denominator from numerator. So I am getting twice of z bar minus of z bar square and minus of z and now applying componendo and dividendo my dear. So now if I add so what I will be getting I will be getting yes minus of 2 z there my dear okay and in denominator yes I will be subtracting denominator from numerator. So it means from this thing will be cancelled I will be getting yes a uh, minus of 2 z bar square. So now these will be cancelled out from each other okay. So finally what I am getting z z bar whole square after cross multiplying my dear equals z z bar. So what does it mean my dear here okay what I am getting here for you yes just take uh, z z bar common I will be getting yes z z bar minus of 1 equals to 0. So either this thing is 0 or z bar is 0. So if z is 0 okay from here I will say that z is 0 if z is 0 then 0 comma 0 will be the one solution my dear. Now from this quantity what I will be getting yes I am getting that yes z z bar should be equals to 1 means I am getting mod of z square equals to 1. So mod z I am getting is 1 my dear. Okay, so, so the mod will be 1 and also z z bar should be 1 my dear. Okay, so z z bar is 1 it means z bar is coming to be 1 by z. So I will use this value of uh, z bar in this equation my dear. Let us say this is equation number A first of all and I am putting the value of z bar in equation number A for solving the z further my dear. Okay, one solution I have got which is 0 comma 0. Now if I put this value of z bar here what I will get from A from equation number A yes it will be z square plus 1 upon z and in the division I will be getting yes uh, z square minus 1 upon z which is equals to iota coming. So I will say that this is z cube plus 1 upon z cube minus 1 equals iota by 1. Now again if I apply component and dividend property I will be getting yes 2 z cube upon 2 which will be equals to yes iota plus 1 iota minus 1 in the division. So I am getting z as 1 plus iota upon iota minus 1, 1 by 3. Means this is just like cube root type my dear. So I will be getting yes 3 distinct solutions of z from here very sure okay. So how many solutions I am getting yes 3 distinct from here and origin I have got from here my dear. So total solution will be how much? Total will be 3 plus 1 equals 4 solutions my dear. So I will again read this question as uh, moderate my dear okay. Question number 6 my dear let L1 L2 dot 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 till L100 are the consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression with the common difference D1 okay and D1 okay and W1 W2 till W100 be the consecutive terms of another arithmetic progression with the common difference D2 where D1 into D2 means product of the common differences d1 into d2 is equals to 10 given to us in this question. Now if I take for each i 1 to 100 ri be a rectangle with the length l1 and width wi my dear and area ai okay. So uh, what will be the ai my dear ai is the area so area will be yes length into where it is li multiplied by wi. If a1 minus a50 is equals to 1000 then find the value of 
a hundred minus a ninety. So first of all, we are using the data given by here in the question. Okay, data given is a fifty one minus of a fifty, which is equals thousand given. So what is a fifty one? It is surely l fifty one multiplied by w fifty one minus l of fifty multiplied by w of fifty equals to thousand, my dear. So what is l fifty one? This is fifty one term of the first arithmetic progression. And whose first term is my dear L1. So it will be yes, L1 plus 50 multiplied by D1. D1 is the common difference. And W51 will be what? Yes, uh, W1 plus 50 multiplied by D2, my dear. Okay, minus, now we are taking this thing, yes, L50 means it is L1 plus 49 D1 multiplied by, yes, it will be for sure uh, W1 plus 49 of D2 equals to 1000 given, my dear. Okay, so uh, what are the terms that would be cancelled out, my dear? Okay, L1, W1 and L1, W1 will be cancelled out due to this negative sign, my dear. So what are the other terms that we will be getting from here? Okay, this is L1, 50, D2 and this is L1, 49, D2, okay, in minus. So in total, I will be getting L1 D2, my dear. Okay. Then next, what I will be getting? 50 D1 W1. And here I am getting 49 D1 W1. And minus sign is there in between. So I will be getting plus of, yes, D1 W1. D1 multiplied by W1. And the remaining portion is, yes, what I am getting it from here? Yes, it is uh, 50 D1 D2 and it is 49 D1 D2. So I am getting plus D1 D2 as well equals to 1000 my dear which is coming here okay so what is the value of d1 into given in the question it is 10 my dear given so i will use this value so i will say that l1 d2 plus d1 w1 is equals to uh, i will subtract 10 from it i will be getting yes 990 let us say this is my first equation my dear okay now we are going to calculate the value for a 100 minus of a 90 okay so a hundred minus of a ninety now we are going to calculate. What is a hundred, my dear? It is surely l hundred multiplied by w hundred minus yes, it is l ninety multiplied by w ninety as well. So what is l hundred? It is for sure l one plus ninety nine d one multiplied by w one plus ninety nine d two, my dear. And here what I would be getting here, okay, this is for sure uh, L1 plus 89 D1 multiplied by, yes, okay, w, W1 my dear, okay, this is W1. So, uh, W1 plus 89 of D2 we are getting, my dear. So, now we have to uh, calculate this value as well. So, what we are getting, C, L1, W1 and L1, W1 will be cancelled out. Now L1 will be multiplied with 99 D2 my dear, okay, and here L1 will be multiplied by 89 D2. So how many L1 D2 we are getting? 10 L1 D2 we are getting my dear from here after doing the calculation, okay. Again 99 D1 W1 and here I am getting yes, how many 89 D1 W1. So total I will be getting 10 of D1 W1 again my dear, okay. And what else is remaining? It is 99. Yes, it is what my dear, this is 99 square d1 d2 uh, minus of 89 square d1 d2 my dear, okay. So what is the value that I am getting now here? For sure, this is my dear plus uh, 99 square minus of 89 square d1 d2 I am getting my This is the value that I have to calculate now my dear. So 10, take 10 common, it is L1 d2 plus d1 w1. And here apply a square minus b square, I will be getting the value as yes, a square minus b square a plus b. So it will be equals 188 and a minus b will be what? Uh, it will give me surely my dear 10 and into d1 a2 is also 10 coming. Now we will substitute this value here of this value here my dear. Okay, so I think we have done the calculation wrong here. This is 50 square d1 d2, this is 49 square. So ultimately what we will be getting, we will be getting 99 d1 d2 here my dear, okay. Be careful with it. This is 50 square minus 49 square we are getting. So 50 plus 49, 50 minus 49, so this is 99 d1 d2 my dear. So it will be now 990, so here I am getting the value as 10 my dear, okay. 
So this is the value coming to be 10. So now if I put this value of 10 here, what I will be getting is the answer. Yes, it is 100 plus 18800. So answer coming is 18900. So this is the total answer, my dear. Okay. So this is again you can say the question uh, moving from easy to moderate. Only calculation type is required in this question. Okay. However, the language is not tough. Okay. So let's take the question number seven, my dear. Good question has been asked in J on permutation and combination, my dear. Okay. The number of four digit integers in the clause interval starting from 2022 to 4482, which can be formed by using the digits, my dear. By using the digits 0, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. This is the thing that we have to make, my dear. Four digit numbers which are Starting from 2022 to 4482, my dear. First of all, tell me what will be the smallest four digit number that I will make from using these digits, my dear. It will be surely 2000, means 2000, my dear. And what is the largest four digit number that I can form from this number, my dear? Okay, but it should not exceed 4422 as well. This is for sure, my dear. Okay, be careful with it because we are calculating this thing with the data given to us. So, starting with the four largest four digit number. Yes, so it will be uh, definitely, my dear, yes, four, and then we will use seven, and then we will use six, and then we will use four. Means the largest four digit number which can be formed is 4764. Okay, 4764, my dear. And we have to move till yes 4482. So how to calculate this thing? First of all, we are going to calculate the four digit numbers starting from two, my dear. Okay. So how many it can be formed? If I start with the two, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So total cases are six, my dear. Total cases are yes six, my dear, for each and every place to be filled out. So we are getting 216. But in these numbers, the numbers starting from 2000 till 2021 are also being included but we have to start the number from 2022 therefore from out of these numbers which can be formed by using the respective digits given should be separated my dear. So which numbers to be excluded? Yes, minus exclude. Yes, which numbers my dear? Yes, 2000 I will exclude. Then 2002 I will exclude. 2003 it will be formed I will exclude. 2004 I will exclude. 2006 I will exclude, 2007 I will exclude and the next which I will exclude is 2022 only and in between them nothing will be excluded because the digits 1 and are not given my dear okay by using these respective digits. So how many has been my dear excluded? 7. So how many we are getting? Yes 216 minus 7 which is equal to for sure 209. Now we will start the number with the digit 3. If I start with digit 3 then there is no restriction, my dear, because the numbers which are starting with digit 3 will be included in this interval forever, my dear. Okay. So what to do? Only these cases, 6 cases means 6 cases are there to fill this place, means out of 0, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 6 again for this, 6 again for this, so I am getting 216 and nothing to be excluded here, my dear. Okay. Now I will start the number starting with 4, my dear. Now I will start the number starting with the 4. Now if I start the number uh, with the 4, then you have to take care of the thing my dear, that number should not be ex exceeding 4482. Means at the second place the digits which would take part are 0, 2, 3 or 4. So this place can be filled out by only 4 places. But now there is no restriction for the next places my dear. So 6 cases for it and 6 cases for it my dear. So in total we are getting yes 36 multiplied by 4 which is equals to 144. So total how many are found my dear yes we will add it 216, 209 and 144 we will be adding a my dear. Okay so 15, 4, 19 okay and then I will be getting 6 and it is 5. So total number of 4 digit numbers which can be formed in between 2022 to 4482 will be definitely my dear 569. 
This is again you can say the moderate question, my dear. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the question number eight. Let ABC be the be the triangle with the side AB and AC as one, and angle BAC is given as pi by two. If a circle of radius r greater than zero touches the sides AB and AC, and also touches internally the circumcircle of the triangle ABC, then you have to find out the value of r, my dear. See what he has given that angle BAC is 90, and AB and AC are given to me. It means right angle triangle is given. So why not to assume the right angle triangle with the coordinate axis, my dear? It will make the calculations easier for you. Okay. So think analytically in this question. So this question, I will say that it is purely analytical way type question, my dear. So what I am doing here, I am putting the point A at origin, my dear, for you, and now taking AB as one, okay, and AC as three, my dear. Okay. This is the length three given to us, and AB is given as one, my dear. Okay. And this is a triangle. So surely, if A has been at origin, then at angle A it will be 90 degree, my dear. Okay. Now I have the circumcircle which is passing through the vertices of this triangle. This would be the circumcircle, my dear, for sure. Okay. Now I have a circle of radius r which touches the sides AB and AC, and also this circle means the circumcircle internally. So I am drawing the circle in this way, my dear, like that. It will be like that, my dear. Okay. And it is touching at point P with the circle, and you have to find the radius of this thing, my dear. Hopefully, the figure is very clear to all of you. Okay. Now, since the the circle, red circle, means the inter circle, is touching the coordinate axis, therefore, the center of this circle will be sure r comma r. So, what will be the equation of circle? X minus r whole square plus uh, y minus r whole square equals r square. Okay. But the thing is, center would be r comma r and radius is r. This is important, my dear. Okay. The center is c, my dear. And now we will yes write the circle as well, my dear. This is a circle which passes through the extremities of the diameter, my dear. Yes, BC is the diameter. So, what will be the coordinate of point B? It is one comma zero, and what will be the coordinate of point C? It will be my dear, yes, zero comma three. So what will be the circle then? Yes, yes, this circumcircle I am writing it for you. This will be x minus one multiplied by x minus zero plus y minus zero uh, multiplied by y minus three equals to zero. So the circle coming is x square minus x. Plus y square minus of 3y equals to zero. So the circle is x square plus y square minus x minus 3y equals to zero. What is the center of the circle? C dash I am writing my dear. Okay, 1 by 2 comma 3 by 2 is the center, and what will be the radius then? Yes, it is will be square root of 1 by 4 plus yes 3 by uh, sorry 9 by 4, 1 by 4 plus 9 by 4, and it is equals to root of 10. Upon root of 4 is 2, my dear. So this will be radius, my dear. Root 10 by 2. Okay. Now we will apply the condition of internal touching of both the circles, my dear. Okay. So what is the internal touching concept? Yes, we are now applying the internal touching concept. C C dash must be equals to yes R minus of R, my dear. Means mod of R minus of root 10 by 2. This is the concept. Now we are going to apply, my dear. So. C C dash will be the yes distance formula between these two points. So what it will be, my dear? Yes, it will be R minus of half whole square. I am squaring as well, my dear, parallelly. And next will be what, my dear? Yes, R minus three by two whole square equals R minus of root of ten by two whole square, my dear. Okay. Now I am just squaring for you, my dear. Here, I am just squaring for you. So if I square it, I will be getting yes r square and minus of r plus one plus next thing will be yes r square minus of three r plus of nine by four and there I am getting r square plus ten by four and minus of root ten r I am getting my dear. So ten by four, nine by four, and this one by four will be cancelled out from each other, and this r square will be cancelled out from r square. So what is the remaining term, my dear? We are getting. R square equals I will take R common. I will be getting 4 minus root 10. This term, this term, and this term I have taken to RHS. Okay. 
so r will be cancelled out r is equals 4 minus of root 10 so the answer coming out to be is near about point of 83 this is near about my idea yes 3 point something okay 3.1617 so the answer is nearly about 0.83. So this is the question number 8 my dear. If this question is there for solving in J, then think analytically my dear. Yes, use the coordinate geometry concept by just making the vertex A at origin my dear. Okay, hopefully this is very clear to all of you. Question number 9. Question is consider the equation. Okay, if you see guys that question basically relevant to the indefinite integration by using the basic limit of the definite integral. Okay, now we have to identify ki which of the following statements is or are correct. It's a multiple uh, type question. Okay, now guys if you observe the question, see carefully, here in that question log x to the base e, that term is coming you know, in numerator as well as in the denominator. So what we are thinking? Okay, we are thinking if you substitute this denominator quantity, which denominator quantity? a minus log x to the base e whole power 3 by 2 as a t. What, what will be the use of that one? Derivative of this one, okay. Derivative of a will be 0. Derivative of minus log x to the base e whole power 3 by 2 will be minus 3 by 2 time log x to the base e whole power 1 by 2 and the derivative of log x will be equal to 1 by x. So, this complete quantity will convert into dt, okay. So, see guys after that what I did, yes. Question was log x to the base e whole power 1 by 2 already I have discussed. Now let's assume this denominator quantity, this one we assumed let it be equal to t. So derivative of that one, derivative of a is 0, derivative of this minus log x to the base e whole power 3 by 2 is minus 3 by 2 log x to the base e whole power 1 by 2 dx dt. Okay, so from here if I substitute, okay, if I substitute this quantity beta, okay, and see carefully here x is also there beta. So, this will convert into a dt. Okay. So, here after that minus 2 by 3 accordingly we can change the limits guys. How? When lower limit when x was equal to 1 t comes out to be equal to a when x is equal to e put x is equal to e. Okay. So, log e to the base e will become 1. So, a minus 1 is the upper limit. So, we are getting dt upon t square is equal to 1. Deriva integral of the 1 by t square is minus 1 by t. So, you will see 2 by 3, 1 by t, t is equal to a to a minus 1. Substitute the limit. After substituting the limit, what we are getting? 2 by 3 time 1 upon a minus 1 minus 1 by a is equal to 1. After simplification, we will get a quadratic equation. Okay, And when we use the quadratic formula, we are getting the values of a as a 3 plus minus root 33 upon 6. Okay, means we are getting irrational values of A. Now, when you come to the option, guys, after that, if I check the one by one option, option A, no A satisfies the above equation. Absolutely wrong, guys, because we are getting some values of A which are satisfying the equation. Option B, an integer A satisfies the no integer value satisfying this one. Option B is also wrong. An irrational number A satisfies the above equation. Obviously, beta. So, option C is the correct one. Similarly, more than one A satisfies the above equation. Yes, guys, we are getting the two irrational values of A depending upon the plus and minus. Hope understood WT. So, the next question is let a1, a2, a3 be an arithmetic progression with a1 is equal to 7. First term is 7 and the common difference is 8. Then t1, t2, 3 we are they are talking about this some other sequence whose first term t1 is equal to 3 and tn plus 1 minus tn is equal to an for n greater than equal to n then we have to identify which of the following is or are true. Okay, again guys that question is relevant to the uh, sequence and series topic by using the basic properties of the arithmetic progression and the summation of the series. So, let us start from the relation that tn plus 1 minus tn is equal to an is given to us. Now, let us substitute, okay, start putting the values of n 1, 2, 3 till n minus 1. Achha, why we are taking till n minus 1? When we replace the n by n minus 1, that tn plus 1 will convert into tn. Actually, our ultimate target is to calculate the nth term of the new series. Okay. So, uh, start putting for n is equal to 1, I am getting t2 minus t1 is equal to a1. For n is equal to 2, I am getting t, uh, t3 minus t2 is equal to a2. Like that. At the end, put n is equal to n minus 1. So, we are getting guys this one as a tn minus tn minus 1 is equal to an minus 1. Okay. Now guys, after see, uh, after that see the pattern in which pattern terms are being cancelled. 
okay so t2 get cancel out t3 get cancel out similarly this last term tn minus 1 will get cancel out that term just before it so after adding all the term what we are getting in the lhs we left with the tn and the minus t1 so tn minus t1 is equal to in rhs we are getting the sum of all the n terms of a1 a2 like that beta so a1 plus a2 till an minus 1 so tn is equal to t1 already is given in the question that is equal to 3 and here we are getting the sum of the n minus term of the first series whose first term is 7 and the common difference is equal to 8. So apply the formula sum of the n term that is n by 2 number of terms are n minus 1. Now into 2a 2 into first term is 7 plus n minus 1 is the number of terms so n minus 2 into common difference 8. Okay, so when you do the simplification, after simplification, we are getting the nth term of that series. That one comes out to be equal to 4n square minus 5n plus 4. Okay, now after that guys, in options, we have to calculate 20th term or 30th term. So depending upon when you substitute the value of n as 20, t20 comes out to be 1504 and t30 comes out to be 3454. So guys, you will see accordingly in a t20, that one is the wrong and t30, that is equal to 3454. We got the one option from here. Similarly, in other options, they are asking the sum of the 20 term or the 30 term of the series. Okay, so let's calculate the sum of n term of the series. Put the sigma notation. Separate the sigma, 4 into sigma n square minus 5 into sigma n plus 4 into n. Okay, so after putting the value of k, k is equal to 20, you will get the sum as a 35615 and for k is equal to 30, sum of 30 term comes out to be 10510. So when you check the option guys after that, option B and that option B and C both comes out to be the correct one. Okay, hope understood everybody. So let's see the next question, question number 11, okay. Let P1 and P2 be the two planes given by, okay. Plane P1 and P2 equation is given in the question. Then which of the following straight lines can be an A's of some tetrahedron? What they are asking? Ki out of these options, which line can be the A's of an some tetrahedron whose two faces lie on the plane P1 and P2? Okay, now guys after uh, see here, uh, I hope... Uh, uh, drawn this diagram of the tetrahedron what i consider here this plane plane adc representing the plane p1 and this base plane bcd is representing the another plane and this cd line is the line of intersection of these two plane now guys you all have studied how to calculate the equation of the line of intersection of the two plane i think it's a very easy okay direction of the line of intersection of the two plane will lie okay that is n vector will be along n1 cross n2 vector. Achha, what are those n1 and n2? n1 is the normal vector along the plane P1 and n2 is the normal vector along the plane P2. I think easily we can write down the n1 vector and n2 vector. After that guys, when you calculate the direction of this line of intersection, that will come to be, okay? Uh, already we have calculated, I, I wrote the equation in front of you, that is 0, minus 4 and 5. That one is the direction. Achha, how to calculate? For calculating the equation of the straight line, we require the point and the direction. Okay, how you calculate the point? Already you studied about it also. Yes, in these two equations of the plane, take the value of any one variable is equal to 0. Here I took the x is equal to 0. Put x equal to 0, we get an equation in y and z. After solving the y and z, you will calculate the point on this line of intersection. That point comes out to be 0, 4 and 0. So that one is the equation of the line of intersection of the two plane. Okay, now guys after that we have to calculate ki out of these lines which are given in the options which can be the age of the some tetrahedron. Guys, that one is the line, that one is the age of the tetrahedron but in none of the option we got this one actually. Okay, now we have to check the lines. Now guys, which line can be the uh, age of the tetrahedron? See guys carefully. Any line which is skew with the line of intersection. What I am saying, bacho? any line which is skew with the line of intersection will be the can be the A's of the tetrahedron. Guys, see on the next slide actually. I wrote this one. Ki any skew line, any skew line with the line of intersection of the given planes can be A's of the tetrahedron. Guys, how you can understand this one? Yes, see carefully. Suppose guys, this is my plane P1 and this one is the plane P2. Okay, beta. So that line, but you see carefully. Okay, so that line. Okay, that line can be the, that line is skew. Okay, with the line of intersection, so that line case, uh, can be the A's of the tetrahedron. Now guys, you know how to check the uh, skew line, 
uh, with a given line. Okay, that one is the one possibility. Second possibility, any intersecting line with line of intersection of the given planes must lie either in plane P1 or in plane P2 can be the A's of the tetrahedron. Hope you understood. Guys, any line which is intersecting the line of intersection and either it lies in the plane P1 or in the plane P2. Okay, that is intersecting the line of intersection. It can be the A's of the tetrahedron. So depending upon these two possibilities, we have to check the options one by one. Okay, so now guys, now we have to check ki which of the line which is present in the option is skew with the given line of intersection. How to check whether the two lines will be skew? Hope everybody uh, clear this concept guys, already you have studied it, okay. Assume is equal to lambda for first line, take any general point on the line, yes, that is equal to 1 comma 1 comma 5 lambda plus 1, okay. Similarly, uh, take is equal to mu on the second line, similarly calculate the point on the second line, yes, 0 minus 4 mu plus 4, 5 mu. Then compare the coefficient of x, y and z, you will get the three equations. From the first two equations, calculate the values of lambda and mu. If they are not satisfying the third equation, then definitely given line will be skewed with the uh, line of intersection. Okay guys, this concept already you studied. So guys, when you will check now, you will come to know that first line A comes out to be skewed with the line of intersection. So that can be the possible A's of the tetrahedron. Now guys, after that come to the second line. Similarly, when you check the second line also, beta, again assume let it be equal to lambda. Second line, let it be equal to mu. Again, compare the coefficient of x, y, z. Again, guys, you will see the lambda and mu you will be getting from the two equation will not be satisfying the third equation. So second line also comes out to be skewed with the given line of intersection. Now, guys, come to the option C and D. Okay, option C and D, what is, what is given to us, guys? In option C and D, but you both the lines passes through the point 0, 4, 0. Option D line 0, 4, 0 and our line of intersection is also passing through the point 0, 4 and 0. Now guys see, now we have to check ki out of these two line, which line lies in the either in plane P1 or in plane P2. If any one line lies in plane P1 or P2 can be the possible ace of the tetrahedron. So let's check guys, how to check guys for the first line, yes. Whether this line okay lies in the plane P1 or P2 or not. Okay, so guys, if that line lies in the plane P1, then the normal of the plane will be perpendicular to that line. So the product of A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 will be equal to 0. So I'm solving guys after that. So tan into minus 2, how much? That is minus 20. Similarly, 5 into 15 plus 75. Next guys, 4 into 48. Now guys, you will see that is not equal to 0 means that line doesn't lie in the plane P1. Similarly, check with the plane P2, yes. So for plane P2, minus 2 into, yes, that is 4. Then guys, after that 5 into 5, 25. After that 4 into 16. Again guys, that one is not equal to 0. Means that line also doesn't lie in the plane P2. So that line can't be the A's of the tetrahedron. Achha, what is the situation? If you see geometrically, guys, actually, if these are the two planes actually, Okay, if these are the two planes. So what is happening actually? Macho, that line passes through the point of intersection. That line passes through the point of intersection of these two planes. Okay, but it neither lie in the plane P1 or in plane P2. So definitely guys, it can't be the ace of the tetrahedron. Okay, so option C will be rejected actually. After that, come to the option D guys. Okay, similarly, that line is also passing through 0, 4, 0. Already I discussed. Now check whether it lies in the plane P1. So how to check? But your tan into 1, yes. Then uh, 15 into minus 2, yes. That is minus 30, then plus 12 into 3. Guys, you will see that will comes out to be not equal to 0. Means that line doesn't lie in the plane P1. Now check that line with the plane P2. Yes, guys. That is 1 into minus 2, minus 2, minus 2 into, yes. That is equal to minus 10 and plus 3 into 4, that is 12. Guys, you see that value comes out to be equal to 0. It means this line, this line lies in, lies in plane P2. It means that can be the possible A's of the tetrahedron. Okay, so it was a basic question of the 3D geometry. Hope understood everybody. So next question. Yes, that question is basically from the vector uh, topic of the class 12th. Okay, question is, okay, let S be the reflection of a point Q with respect to the plane given by. Equation of the plane in parametric form is given to us. 
hope everybody is habitual everybody is uh, know what is the parametric equation of the plane okay where t and p are the real parameters and i cap j cap k cap are the unit vectors along the three positive coordinate axis if the position vector of the point q and s are given us in the question then we have to check which of the following options is or are true means we have to check an alpha plus beta means our ultimate target is to calculate the values of alpha beta and gamma after that we easily we can check the options one by one now guys first that one is the parametric form of the equation of the plane first i am converting it into cartesian form of equation of the plane for that i consider let position vector r is equal to x i k plus y j k plus z k k then compare the coefficient of i j and k bacho you will get x is equal to minus of t plus p y is equal to t z is equal to 1 plus p now eliminate the parameters yes how put the value of t as a y put the value of p z minus 1 after that you will get the equation of plane as a x plus y plus z is equal to 1 i think very easy easily you will able to calculate we have to calculate the image of this point 10 comma 15 comma 20 in the plane x plus y plus z is equal to 1 and its coordinate we have assume alpha beta and gamma now guys everybody is familiar with the formula how to calculate the image of a point in a plane the formula is yes x minus x1 upon coefficient of x like that alpha minus 10 upon 1 is equal to beta minus 15 upon 1 is equal to gamma minus 20 upon 1 is equal to minus 2 times put the point in the equation of the plane 10 plus 15 plus 20 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus 1 after solving it comes out to be minus 88 by 3 now guys from it you can calculate the point alpha beta gamma okay that is its coordinate comes out to be minus 58 by 3 minus 43 by 3 and minus 28 by 3 so after that guys accordingly you can check the options what is the value of alpha plus beta beta plus gamma alpha plus beta plus gamma so depending upon guys you will come to know option a b c comes out to be the correct one for that particular question hope understood everybody so the next question yes that question basically from the conic section and uh, under the conic section from the parabola part actually bachcho question is consider the parabola we are given the equation of the parabola as y square is equal to 4x i have drawn the diagram in front of you that one is the parabola y square is equal to 4x now let s be the focus of the parabola guys s is the focus its coordinate easily we can write down that is 1 comma 0 now a pair of tangents drawn to the parabola from the point p guys from this external point p minus 2 comma 1 we have drawn two pair of tangents on the parabola actually bachcho okay they intersect the parabola at the points p1 and p2 okay so guys how can we calculate the uh, coordinate of those point p1 and p2 see guys in parametric form i am assuming the coordinate on the uh, parabola that is at square comma 280 a is equal to 1 that is t square comma 2t now let's write down the equation of the tangent at the point p1 how to write down the equation of tangent at the point p yes that is y into y1 so y into 2t is equal to 2a x plus x1 guys x1 is t square that tangent passes through the point p minus 2 comma 1 pass it by the point minus 2 comma 1 okay so you will get the value of t okay you will get a quadratic in t then values of t comes out to be 2 and minus 1 two values of t okay are denoting the two different points p1 and p2 so put the values of t p1 comes out to be 4 comma 4 and p2 comes out to be 1 comma minus 2 okay now guys after that next part of the question ki let q1 and q2 be the points on the lines sp1 and sp2 respectively such that pq1 is perpendicular to sp1 and pq2 is perpendicular to sp2 guys see carefully okay q1 and q2 are two corresponding points on the lines sp1 and sp2 so guys what i did i joined the sp1 if you extend it and if you draw the perpendicular from point p that is the point q1 on the sp1 line similarly if you draw the line sp2 and you extend it guys like that okay that q2 is the another point on the line sp2 now guys our ultimate target is to calculate the values of q1 and q2 because depending upon options are given in the question we have to calculate q1 q2 as q1 p q1 like that guys we have to calculate now guys see carefully guys this q1 this q1 is nothing but this q1 is nothing but the foot of perpendicular of the point p on the line sp1 similarly q2 is the foot of perpendicular is the foot of perpendicular of the point p on line sp2 so our ultimate target is to calculate the equation of the sp1 and sp2 guys how to calculate yes guys we know the two points yes 
calculate the equation of sp1 and sp2. sp1 line passes through the point 1 comma 0 and the slope is 4 by 3. So guys, you will calculate that will comes out to be 4x minus 3y minus 4 equal to 0. Similarly, when you calculate the second equation sp2, its slope um, uh, comes out to be infinity, which not defined. So that line will be parallel to the y-axis. Its equation comes out to be x is equal to 1. Now we have to calculate the uh, foot of perpendicular of the point P in the line sp1, bacho. its equation is given. Achha, everybody knows the formula, how to calculate the foot of perpendicular of a point in a line. Yes, the formula is x minus x1 upon a is equal to y minus y1 upon b is equal to minus ax1 plus by1 plus c upon a square plus b square. So apply the formula, so x minus of minus 2, x plus 2 upon 4, then y minus 1 upon minus 3 is equal to Yes, put the point in the line and after solving guys, it comes out to be 3 by 5. 3 by 5. So, uh, from here you can calculate the coordinate of the point Q1. Bacho. And from here x comes out to be 2 by 5 and y comes out to be minus 4 by 5. Similarly guys, when you calculate the image of the second point beta na, P in the second line SP2, that comes out to be 1 comma 1. Achha, guys, easily you can observe. Na? But so that line is perpendicular to the x axis. Bacho. Okay, x is equal to 1. So, on that line, x coordinate will be 1 and much y coordinate will be the y coordinate of the point P. So, point Q2 comes out to be 1 comma 1. Now, guys, after that, it's a very simple question. You have to calculate this distance Q1, Q2 by using distance formula SQ1, SQ2 and PQ1. All the distances you can calculate and depending upon it, you can check the options much after that. Okay, so you will see, guys, after that, uh, this option B C and D are comes out to be correct for that particular question. Hope understood everybody. So the next question, that question is basically from the determinant chapter and uh, some concept of the trigonometry we have used in that question. Question is, okay, let determinant M denotes the determinant of the square matrix M and uh, this G function is defined from 0 to pi by 2 to R you know? and G theta, definition of the G theta is given as root of f theta minus 1 and plus root of f of pi by 2 minus theta minus 1. Now guys, after that, the function of theta is given in the two determinate form. Then guys, after that, let px be a quadratic polynomial whose roots are the maximum and minimum values of the function g theta. Okay. And if p2 is equal to 2 minus root 2, then we have to check which of the following is are the true actually. Okay, so guys see, first let's simplify this function of theta function. Guys, first I come to this function. Everybody observe guys, if you observe the diagonal element of this second determinant actually, sin pi, which that one is equal to 0, okay, say so, sin pi is equal to 0, cos pi by 2, that one is also 0 and tan pi means all the diagonal entries are equal to 0. Now guys, if you observe those entries, cos theta plus pi by 4 and this one, Bacho, they will come out to be opposite to each other in sign. Similarly, bacho, tan theta minus pi by 4 and that value called theta plus pi by 4, they come out to be opposite in sign, bacho. like that, those entries also. So guys, that matrix, you will see guys, such type of property is there for the, which type of determinant, bacho? that one is the skew symmetric determinant. And guys, everybody know, determinant value of the skew symmetric matrix comes out to be 0 guys, okay? Now, ultimately, we have to solve this first determinant. So, either you can do the direct expansion or you can observe, guys, if I add in column 1, this column, in column 1, if I add column 3, what you will be getting? Yes, guys, 1 plus 1, that will 2, 0, 0. And then expand it with respect to this column 1 only. So, after expansion, you will get function of theta comes out to be 1 plus sine square theta and the value of the square symmetric determinant is equal to 0. Put the value of f of theta in the function bacho, g theta, that one is given in the question. So its value comes out to be modulus of sin theta plus modulus of cos theta. It is given in the question that theta lies from 0 to pi by 2. So definitely both sin and cos will be positive. So write it as a sin theta plus cos theta. Now in the given uh, range 0 to pi by 2, we have to calculate the range of the g theta function. So guys, at theta is equal to 0, I am getting 1. At pi by 2 also, I am getting 1. So at boundary values, I'm getting the minimum value comes out to be 1. For maximum, but you equal sin theta is equal to cos theta. So when you calculate, maximum value comes out to be equal to root 2. So range of the g theta function is from 1 to root 2. So maximum and minimum value of the g theta function are the roots of this polynomial. It is given in the question. Yes, Gacho? Okay, so after that, we consider a polynomial. 
whose roots are 1 and root 2. So write it as a k into x minus 1 into x minus root 2. To calculate the value of the leading coefficient, we have given k for x is equal to 2 minus root 2. Okay, put x is equal to 2 minus root 2. So from here, value of the k comes out to be equal to 1. So that is the polynomial px is equal to x minus 1 into x minus root 2. So 1 and root 2 are the roots of this polynomial. Bacho. Its graph will be a parabola. So when the values either will be less than 1 or more than root 2, value will be positive. And if the any value of x which lies between 1 to root 2, its value will be negative. Depending upon, we have to check the options one by one. So see guys, option A, 3 plus root 2 by 4. Guys, 3 plus root 2 by 4, how much? 3 plus 1.4. So that is 4.4 .4 divided by 4. So that is 1 point something. Bacho. See carefully guys. So what we are getting? That value lies between 1 to root 2. Obviously bacho, we are getting that value comes out to be negative. And we are given bacho. clear to, clear to everybody. Bacho? Okay. So option A will be the correct one for that. Okay. Similarly, if you check the option B, 1 plus 3 root 2 upon 4. Yes, 1 plus 3 root 2, 1.4. Yes, bacho, that is 4 into 1.4. 4.2 4. plus 1, 5.2 upon 4. You know, that value comes out to be, yes, but that value will be more than 1 and less than root 2. So that value should be negative. But in the option, it is given as a positive. So that will be the incorrect one. Similarly, guys, you can check the other options also. When you check the option C, 5 root 2 minus 1 upon 4. So 5 into root 2, 1.4. You know, so 1.4 into 5. 7 minus 1 divided by, na, like that, bacho. yes, 7 minus 1 upon. So when you check, bacho, that value comes out to be also greater than 0 only. Bacho. So option C will also be the correct one. Similarly, guys, when you check the option D, that will also comes out to be the incorrect one. Okay. So hope understood everybody this one. Hello, friends. So let's move to the section 3. And, and bacho, in section 3, you will see matching list type questions are there. So that one is the first question, question number 15. Consider the following two lists. Bacho. In the list 1, some intervals of x and some trigonometric equations are given to us. And in the list 2, their corresponding solutions we have written. Okay, Whether they have the 2 element, 3 element in their solution set actually. So let's solve bacho, 1 by 1 options. Yes. Then guys, we have to check the options. And after that, easily able to solve the question. So first part of the question, ki x lies minus 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3. Equation is cos x plus sin x is equal to 1. Now guys, everybody know it is the a cos theta plus b sin theta form. So multiply by both sides, root a square plus b square. So it will convert into cos x minus pi by 4 is equal to cos pi by 4. Now write down the general equation for this. What is the general equation of general solution of the equation? Cos theta is equal to cos alpha. That is theta is equal to 2n pi plus minus alpha, where n is an integer. So after solving, and I transfer the pi by 4, once take the positive sign, then negative sign. Bacho. Values of x comes out to be either 2n pi or 2n pi plus pi by 2. Now guys, in that interval, minus 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3, means minus 120 to 120, we have to see which values of x are satisfying. So guys, just start putting the value of n. For n is equal to 0, I am getting x as a 0. 0 lies in that interval, so one solution is 0. Next, put n is equal to 0 here also, beta. That one also pi by 2. Yes, 90 degree also lies in the given interval. So pi by 2 will also be. After that, if you put the n is equal to 1, but your 2 pi, 2 pi plus pi by 2, those values doesn't lie in the given interval. So we are getting the two solutions for the first equation, 0 and pi by 2. Come to the second part. Second part, but for x belong to minus 5 pi by 18 to 5 pi by 18. Equation is tan 3x is equal to 1 by root 3. Write it as a tan pi by 6. Now, what is the general solution of the equation? tan theta is equal to tan alpha. Yes, guys, that is theta is equal to n pi plus alpha. So sol after solving, we are getting x is equal to 6n plus 1 pi by 18. Now, guys, again, put the values of n. For n is equal to 0, I'm getting pi by 18. Pi by 18 lies in the given interval, obviously, beta. Then for n is equal to minus 1, you will see, we will get bacho, minus 5 pi by 18. Yes, minus 5 pi by 18 is also there. So you will get the two solutions for the second part also, beta. Similarly, if you move to the third part of the, in the third part, bacho, x belong to minus 6 pi by 5 to 6 pi by 5. Bacho. So cos 2x comes out to be, and uh, equation is cos 2x is equal to root 3 by 2. Write it as a cos pi by 6. General solution, that is 2x is equal to 2n pi plus minus pi by 6. Start, uh, so after solving, x comes out to be n pi plus minus pi by 12. Start putting the values of n. For n equal to 0, I'm getting plus minus pi by 12. Both the values of x lies in the given interval. You can see bacho, easily. For n is equal to 1, pi plus minus pi by 12, bacho, those values also lies in that interval. 
Similarly, minus pi plus minus pi by 12. Those values also lies in the given interval. So guys, from here we are getting the six elements as a solution set. Now come to the last part. Yes, but when x belong to minus 7 pi by 4 to 7 pi by 4. Okay, equation is cos x minus sin x is equal to minus 1. Again, multiply by 1 by root to both sides. Write it cos x plus pi by 4 is equal to 4 minus 1 cos 3 pi by 4. General solution x plus pi by 4 is equal to 2n pi plus minus 3 pi by 4. After solving, we get x as 2n pi plus pi by 2 or x as 2n pi minus pi. After putting the values of n, guys, you will get from here for n equal to 0 pi by 2, for n equal to minus 1, minus 3 pi by 2. For n equal to 1, 2 pi plus, but so that will exceed the range. Next, after that guys, here n equal to 0, minus pi, for n equal to 1, I am getting pi. So, 4 solution we are getting from here. So guys, after that, when you check the options now, one by one, okay, you will see, but your option B will be the correct one. First, and are relevant to the P, but your P means two, uh, two elements. For the first and second part, we are getting the two elements in the solution set. Okay, so first and second, that will be the answer. Okay, guys, you can solve this question by the options elimination also. Very easily, guys, see. It's not, we have to solve all the four equations, guys. Because, guys, you will see for the first, it is relevant to P, second relevant to P, like that, and what a fourth first. So, if you solve for the first two equations only. Now, guys, how easily you can solve these two equations? See carefully, one more method I'm telling. But your cos x plus sin x is equal to 1. Yes. If you multiply by 1 by root 2, guys, you can write this one as a sin x plus pi by 4 is equal to 1 by root 2. Now guys, if I treat this angle, let it be equal to some theta. So we are getting much of this one as a sin theta is equal to 1 by root 2. So for this first part, if I draw the graph of the sin, bacho, okay, that one is the graph of the sin. Achha, in which interval we have to draw the graph? Guys, you know, uh, theta, bacho, x lies from minus 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3. And here theta lies you know, bata, x plus pi by 4. So add pi by 4 here and here. So guys, that is minus 120 plus 45. But so that will be some 75 degree. And 120 plus 45. But so that will be 165 degree. So in that interval, we have to see where this line x equal to 1 by root 2. It is parallel to x axis. How many times that line cuts the graph of the sin x in the given interval? So see guys, if I draw the graph of the sin x. Yes guys, like that. So somewhere which one, minus 75, which that is minus 90, so minus 75 will be here. And guys, that is the line. You know, that line is y is equal to 1 by root 2. So guys, that value we know that is 180, that one is the 0. Achha, where this line intersect, which that angle corresponding to 135 degree, yes, that is 3 pi by 4. Okay, but till 165 we have to check, which so you can see till 165, two solutions will be there for the first part. Now, similarly, when you solve the second part also, beta. second part is tan 3x equal to 1. See carefully, guys, I'm writing you know, tan 3x is equal to 1 by root 3. So, guys, let's uh, draw the graph of, if you consider that angle, let it be equal to theta. You know, so, from where to where your theta will uh, vary, but you actually, x varies minus 5 pi by 18 to 5 pi by 18. So, can you see, but your theta will vary from where, minus 5 pi by 6 to 5 pi by 6. So, if you draw the graph of the tan x, yes guys, that one is the graph of the tan x like that. See, that one is the pi by 2, which one, yes. Like that, that is 0 and pi by 2 and that one is pi, which one. And similarly, for the negative part also, we can draw the graph like that. And that value is minus pi by 2 and that value is pi by 2. Now, guys, see in the given interval minus 5 pi by 6 to 5 pi by 6. You know? But in that interval, can you see that line y is equal to 1 by root 2? You know, but y is equal to 1 by root 2. That line cuts the graph at exactly two points. Okay, so we are getting the two solutions for the second set also. Beta. Okay, now, guys, after that, no need to solve the rest two equations. See the options. By option elimination, easily you will able to solve this question. But in option B only, I am getting the four first part as a P, for the second part also as a P. None of the option is giving P, P answer for the first and second part. Okay, so like that you can solve the questions. Okay. Hello everyone, we are back with the solution of ITJ Advanced 2022. Fine, continue with the next question, question number 16. 
in which we have two players P1 and P2 play a game against each other. Fine. In every round of the game, each player rolls a fair dice once. All right. Important things. We have the dice. We have the six faces of the die have six decimal number. Obviously, let X and Y denote the reading on the die rolled by P1 and P2. Fine. So actually, they are talking about. Uh, let's say you have a name of P1 and P2 for the two cases. Now the condition we have start from this line. If X is greater than Y, then P1 score five points. Right? This is the important thing. And P2 score zero point. If X and Y are equal, then each player score two points, and so on. If X is less than Y, then P1 score zero point and P2 score five points. Fine. So uh, first of all, I just want to collect this important data and uh, manipulate all the things because we need to find what happened when we have that X and Y be the total scores of the P1 and P2 respectively. Then after playing of i round, what happened we have? Or in short, when you uh, see here in this. Column x2, y2, we have an x3, y3, we have. So in short, first of all, I just try to find the value of x2 and y2 and uh, establish a relation between of these two, right? Yes, definitely. So x2, y2, we have, and uh, we can design. First of all, uh, these are the option. First of all, I just want to collect the data, and let's say we have p1 and p2, two cases, fine, and also. Now, for both the P1 and P2, we have the two possibility for X and Y. Are you getting my point? Yes, definitely. So uh, let's say we have the first possibility here and second one here. For the P1 and P2, first possibility that is what? That is, let's say P1 and P2 we have the zero. For what? For when we have X is greater than Y, then P1 is score five points and P2 is score zero, right? And same thing we can do for another one case, like again the same one repeated, again x is uh, greater than y and p1 is more and p1 wins the uh, wins the game, right? This is one of the case. And the second one, now actually I want to write p1 and p2 again and again here. So let's say we have these all. Now, for next P1 and P2, what we can write? Again, we can write, let's say, P1 once uh, and we have P2 zero. But what about the second? The second possibility, maybe it will be a tie, right? And in case of tie, that means x equal to y, that means we have 2 and 2, because it is given that in this question, when x equal to y, then both the players have scored two points, right? Fine. Now. Same thing we can do for the third one, P1 and P2. Now the third case, what we can take? We can take again the shuffle one. This one we can shuffle here 2, 2, and here we have 5, 0. Right. Now, next one, what we can do? Again, we can uh, think like maybe there is a one possibility in which we have both the tie occur. Are you getting my point? So 2, 2, 2, 2. Fine. Again, we have one more possibility, I think two more possibilities are there. Yes, definitely. The next possibilities that we have is what? Maybe we can think like x1, phi 0, what about y? We can uh, say like phi 0 we have, then we have, yes, 0 phi, one more possibilities, right? And the same thing we can do for P1, T2 and the last one, we can shuffle this thing and we have 0, 5 and here we have 5, 0, right? I just shuffle this one. Now, this is the possibilities, these all the possibilities we have. Now, it's time to com conclude all the data and what happened when we have this case, 5, 0 and 5, 0, obviously, the probability to getting uh, probability to choose any two numbers is what the probability is 62 and the uh, total outcomes we have that is 36 we know right same thing for this one five and zero again we have repeated one five and zero so we can again write 62 and divided by 36 right now the same thing we can do for p1 and p2 here we have five zero again we have the two number we have to pick 
or choose two number right 5 and 0 then we can pick as 6 c2 by 36 but now here we have 2 only so we can pick as 6 c1 by 36 and the same thing we can do for this one 2 2 and 5 0 and 2 2 5 0 we have what again we have the same thing that is 6 c1 by 36 and 6 c2 by 36 very easy once when we understand it and uh, here we have only 6 for 2 6 by 36 similarly 6 c1 or 6 by 36 whatever you can say and 5 0 0 5 we can write here as again the same that is 6 c2 by 36 into 6 c2 by 36 and the same thing we can do here or you can say it is a repeat telecast 6 c2 by 36 right now when you are uh, okay so this may be a possibility or it may be a possibility or it may be a possibility so add these all then you have the final one that is what when you are going to solve this one then you have the answer that is 11 by 16 fine when you solve this data you will get 11 by 16 and you can see here 11 by 16 we have that means for q and we can match probability for x2 greater than is equals to y2 we have 11 by 16 are you getting my point now see here look into the option this is the important thing again try to see with parallelly your option with the solution right first to q first q yes we have so that means we have only a and B option we have picked. C and D we can ignore from this one, right? Right. Now, what about second? Second we have R, so no need to solve for both. Again, we have third T. These are the answers that we have. Are you getting my point? No need to solve further. We have second R, third T, right? Even you can cross check, but you will get the same one. Now, think about only fourth option, S or T. Simple C here. For fourth, we have <coughs> sorry, x3 is greater than y3. x3 is greater than y3, then what we can think about this? Sir, we can think like what, uh, when we're going to solve for x3 is greater than y3, then we can do one thing that is what? That is, sir, for x3 is greater than y3, you can think like subtract the equal cases for both. That is what? That is x3 is equals to y3. You can subtract this one from 1. But is it enough? No. Again, we have the common one that is x2 and x1. Are you getting my point? So we have to take half for this one. Half of 1 minus x3 is equals to y3. Right? And x3 is equal to y3, we have what? Actually, we have x3 is equal to y3 in the third option. In the third option, we have t is the correct one right so the value of x3 y3 we have 77 by 432 right 77 by 432 so you can check 1 minus 77 by 432 right so half 1 minus 77 by 432 then you will get the final answer that is what that is 355864 you can cross check after the calculation right so here we have the first option is the correct one hope it is clear to everyone now come to the next question the next question that we have is what let pqr be non zero real numbers that are respectively be 10th 100th and 1000th terms of the harmonic progression very interesting question and very easy when you understand the language of this question that is what we have the harmonic progression that is 10th 100th and 1000th, right? And now we have the 3 equation x plus y plus z is equals to 1, 10x plus 100y plus 1000z is equals to 0, and qrx plus pry plus pqz is equals to 0, right? Listen, see here what I just want to uh, take the important data that is pqr we have harmonic progression, right? So we can say 1 upon p is what? 1 upon p we can write a plus 90 right 
because we have the harmonic progression and the tenth term of the harmonic progression we have not 1 upon a only a plus 9b and similarly 1 by q we have what 1 by q a plus 99d and the same thing we can do for r that is 1 by r we have a plus triple 9d right now also look into these all the equation we have the third equation that is qrx plus pry plus pqz is equals to 0 and you can see here once when we divide this equation by pqr I think we have a very useful equation at that time, right? Yes, definitely. I just want to divide this equation by PQR, PQR and PQR. Then we have what? QR, QR cancel. Then we have X upon P. That is 1 upon P into X. Similarly, we have what? PR, PR cancel. Then we have 1 by QY. And similarly, we have 1 by R z right 1 by r z and is equals to 0. Now you can see here 1 by p and 1 by q and 1 by r is the value of something yes we have the value in place of 1 by p I just want to write a plus 9 d so here we can write a plus 9 d similarly here we can write a plus 99 d similarly here we have a plus 999 d is equals to 0 into z is equals to 0 right i just substitute these all the values in our equation now you can mark okay for necessary condition if we have this is let's say equation number one and uh, this one is equation number two this one is equation number three now i just want to take the help of the option that is what here we have in option number one if q by r is equals to 10, then the system of the linear equation has the solution. Okay, so actually we need to comment our system have the infinite solution or a no solution or whatever, right? So first we have the q by r is equals to 10, then what happened? We have to see. Yes, definitely we can see because q by r uh, for first option, let's say we have q by r is equals to 10, q by r is equals to 10. Then can we write this value as 1 upon r and 1 upon q? right now in place of 1 by r can we substitute the value yes in place of 1 upon r we can write as what a plus triple 9 d a plus triple 9 d and in place of 1 by q we can also substitute the value that is a plus 99 d now it is equals to 10 when you further solve this one you will get a is equals to d are you getting my point and which is a very important data Similarly, when you solve the second one, this you will get A does not is equals to D. And for this again, you will get A does not is equals to D. And the fourth one, again, you have A is equals to D. Are you getting my point? Now, actually we have A, uh, the relation between A and D. So, can we manipulate our equation number uh, 3 and 2 in terms of A and D? Equation number 3, we can easily manipulate once when we multiply it by D in LHS and RHS. Yes, definitely. So, then we have 10 dx and the next one 100 dy and 1000 dz. 100 dy and 1000 dz is equal to 0. Now, this is let's say this is the equation uh, equation number three already we took so let's say this is the equation number four now i just want to uh, subtract equation number four with equation number one then we have what 10 ds when we are going to subtract we have a 10 here we have dx only and then we have 100 dy for this one we have again ay and again dy right and the same thing we have 100 dz when we are going to subtract then we have a and here we have minus dz is equals to 0 actually here we have the minus 1 minus dy and minus sorry 
minus dx minus dy. So here when we are going to take a as a common then we have x plus y plus z right and similarly when we are going to take minus sign as a common then we have dx plus dy plus dz right or you can say when we take d common then we have x plus y plus z so in short we have the equation in terms of x plus y plus z and here we have a minus d is equals to 0 and you know that x plus y plus z it is given that it is 1 right so we can substitute here a and then again we have a minus d is equals to 0 or uh, if you think about the option then you can say sir when we think a is equals to d then what happened then a is equals to d then it has infinite solution are you getting my point for this equation yes definitely even if you think like sir what happened when we have x plus y plus z is equals to 1 you can also multiply here by a minus d then again you have the same thing a minus d x plus y plus z is equals to a minus d right so in short in all the cases when we have a is equal to d so for this one we have the infinite many solution okay so this one is the correct one also when you think about option t at least one solution so this is also the correct one at least one solution is also the correct one because we have the infinite solution right so now think about the option option number a we have first should be connected with t yes this is also correct one first should be connected with q q we have what we have x 10 by 9 y minus y 1 by 9 and z 0 you can check 10 by 9 minus 1 by 9 z is equals to 0 when we are going to satisfy here again you will get the answer as or you can say like this definitely satisfy your this value equation right so this also will become the solution of this uh, equation right so again q also the correct one so both the correct one right now what about t now q also correct one now think about the second second we have r s okay second we have p y r does not is equals to 100 that means a does not is equals to d that means we have the no solution so second should be connected with no solution where it is here so second should be connected with s are you getting my point all right all right all right so second should be connected with s so now we can remove the option number a and also option number c from this one we can eliminate this a and uh, c now we have v and d only now what about third third option is what third should be connected with s and third should be connected with p third we have no solution all right third we have a does not is equals to d yes definitely third should be uh, connected with s because we have a does not is equals to d and when a does not is equals to d definitely we have the no solution because we have this one are you getting my point right so from this we can fix the option number b is the correct one for this question hope it is clear to everyone come to the next one in which we have consider the ellipse x square upon 4 plus y square upon 3 is equals to 1 and now we have the question uh, is quite easy this question once you understand properly we have let h alpha comma 0 here we have h alpha comma 0 and uh, we appoint a straight line drawn through h parallel to the y-axis crosses the ellipse and its auxiliary circle yes we all know very well that what would be the condition for ellipse and the auxiliary circle all right let's say we have the ellipse this one and the auxiliary circle we can draw by taking the diameter of the major axis as this type right let's say this is the circle and the equation of the ellipse we have x square upon 4 plus y square upon 3 is equals to 1 uh, one line we have to draw right here we have the point o let's say a let's say b and this a we have 2 comma 0 right now we need to draw a one line which is parallel to y axis and this line definitely here we have h point which is alpha comma 0 it is given that in this question and now further we need to read the question okay the y axis crosses the ellipse and its auxiliary circle at a points e and f respectively all right so we have 
here it should be f and here it should be e. Now, we can go ahead. What happened? Uh, the tangent to the ellipse at the point e intersect the positive x axis at a point g. Okay, so we need to draw a one tangent at a point e. So we can draw as this type, right? So let's say here we have the g. Now, suppose the straight line joining f and the origin makes an angle phi with the positive x axis. Straight line joining with f and the origin, right? So f here we have f and the origin here so we can make as this type and this line makes an angle that is phi with the origin and now if we think about the option when we are going to see so they are just giving us the angle that is uh, 5 by 4 5 by 3 whatever and they are asking about the area of the triangle fgh right so uh, we can see here first we need to draw one tangent and the equation of tangent we can write as, as t is equals to 0 and let's say we, we have a one point that is okay first I just want to write the coordinate of this f we have what actually the equation of the circle is what equation of circle we have x square plus y square is equals to 4 right because we have the radius as a 2 now the coordinates we can write as 2 cos theta 2 sin theta and for this e we can write again 2 cos theta but root 3 sin theta right a cos theta and b sin theta now next one we have what t is equals to 0 at this point e okay fine so we can apply t is equals to 0 now we have 2 x into x1 2 cos theta into x and divided by 4 plus root 3 sin theta divided by 3 into y is equals to 1. So this is the equation of this tangent, right? Now, what about this point g? For g, we need to substitute here y is equals to 0, then we have x as what? 2 sec theta, right? Comma 0. Now, if we think about the area of this fgh, so we need to find the gh also, right? And the gh we can easily find because we have the h as what? h we have alpha comma 0 and alpha is what alpha is the point it is that is 2 cos theta comma 0 now the question is very easy very easy question we have because first one we need to find the area of this triangle f g h so area of this triangle we can find half base base we have what we have h g that means 2 sec theta minus 2 cos theta or in short we can write 2 sec theta minus cos theta right and perpendicular h that is 2 sin theta right 2 sin theta fine now it would be cancelled now here we have 2 sec minus cos that means 1 by cos and 1 minus cos square theta it will become the sin theta and sin theta sin square theta into sin theta it will become sin q theta and in the denominator we have cos theta only right so fine, now we have the area that is 2 sin q theta upon cos theta. Now we can check one by one with the option we, what happened when we have the phi that is pi by 4, right? When we have the pi that is pi by 4, phi as pi by 4. Now we can check here 2 sin q theta 1 by root 2 cube that means 1 by 2 into 1 by root 2. And here we have the cos theta, we have 1 by root 2 only, right? So, here we have the value that is 1. Check the option. First, it should be connected with Q. Now, first, it should be connected with Q. So, we can eliminate this option A and B. C and D, we have Q. All right, what about second? Okay, second would uh, maybe the decision maker. Phi, when we have pi by 3, then we have what? Okay phi is 60 degree phi by 3 then we have what again we have twice of sin 60 degree cube that means root 3 by 2 so root 3 and here we have the 8 and here we have 3 and in the denominator also we have 
cos root 3 by 2 cos 60 degree that means 1 by 2 so here we have 2 2 4 the right now here we have 2 2 so 3 root 3 by 2 it would be the answer is there 3 root 3 yes we have the t is the one and you can see here yes option c is the correct one for this question are you getting my point hope it is clear to everyone right thank you